That's exactly what I wanted to talk with you uh, about today. Codex Alimentarius, uh, what exactly is it? Well, if you want the historical background, if you want to find out how the people who are controlling our food have a direct lineal relationship to the genocidalists of the Second World War, I suggest you go to our website. That's the website of the Natural Solutions Foundation. It's www.healthfreedomusa.org, healthfreedomusa.org. And you can scroll down the video section and watch a video called Nutricide, N-U-T-R-I-C-I-D-E. And you will, un you will learn how the German genocidalists from the Second World War, after they got out of prison for crimes against humanity, went back to work as pharmaceutical executives and realizing that healthy people are very, very bad for business and realizing that it's harder to knock off healthy people, especially in large numbers, they decided to ask the United Nations to take over the control of food worldwide. The United Nations was only too happy to do so and set up the Codex Alimentarius or Food Rule Commission. In 1962, it began working in 1963. Their intent was to have control of all food worldwide by December 31st, 2009. That's fallen uh, behind, and they are having trouble keeping up with the schedule. Therefore, several things are happening in the United States, one of which is that there are six food bills in front of our spineless, gutless, worthless United States Congress. Now our spineless, gutless, worthless United States Congress takes its marching orders from the special interests like the biotech um, uh, companies, for instance, Monsanto, and like the pharmaceutical industries like Merck and um, Pfizer and uh, um, Hoffman LaRoche and uh, Smith Klein Glaxo, and they do anything that the, these industries want them to do. One of the things that they are planning to do, and this is no exaggeration, Sean, this is exactly the way it is, they are planning to take away your right to either grow or access clean food. They are taking away your right to have food grown by organic farmers who are using organic principles and saving seeds. They are in fact criminalizing the saving of seeds. They are criminalizing small farmers and you in your kitchen will have to potentially keep records about where the food came from, what your emergency disaster plan is, what your chain of custody is, what your cold chain documentation is, where you bought the food, where it came from before you bought it, and so on and so on. Of course, if you're using prepared food, which is what they want, you don't have to do any of this. If it sounds extreme, it's because it is extreme. This is going on right now. What can people do about it? Lots. Because you see, here's the secret, Sean. Pushback works. If one person sends an email to Congress, it means less than nothing. But if 550,000 people send an email to Congress, or as we have had happen, 688,000 people send emails to Congress saying, don't you dare, don't you dare. What happens is that these folks push back. They back off and they go away. Do they come back again? Sure, they come back again because there's an underlying agenda that we can get into if you like. But we push them back step by step by step and we have very little time. Once these food bills become uh, part of our legislative reality, there will be virtually no going back from them. This is already happening in Europe.